Hey everybody, welcome back to another series that I'm going to start on this channel. And in this series we're going to create a calculator with WPF. I thought this would be a good first project for those of you that are getting into WPF. And uh, I, I honestly haven't worked in WPF in quite a while, so this is a good refresher for me. And this is going to be a very raw series. Um, and by that I mean if I ever have to search anything on Google, Stack Overflow, whatever the case may be, I'll let you guys know and that way I can share my thought process and what I'm doing to search because that's a really big important uh, skill to have is just to know what kind of questions to ask and maybe I don't know all of the answers. I thought this would be a good project to get your feet wet with WPF and if you've never worked with WPF before I recommend that you go download Visual Studio. It's an IDE and it allows you to create the WPF application. Once you have it downloaded, get the community version, by the way, because that's the free one for developers. But once you have it, you should be able to search up this guy, Visual Studio Installer. Okay. By the way, don't forget to hit subscribe so you can follow along. And uh, hopefully I remember to put these on a playlist as I go. But don't forget to hit the subscribe button. We talk about various programming tips and tricks and things I find out and I share with you guys. But here we go. So it wants to update. So let's go ahead and do that. Hopefully that doesn't take long. All right, cool. So it updated and now we're looking at the installer. So you should see this once you have it installed. Um, and then we'll go to more right here. And I think what we want is modify. Hopefully you get the same options as I'm seeing it. And one of these, it's this one, the .NET Desktop Development. That's the one that you want to install. It'll install everything that you need in order to create WPF applications. It, it comes with dot, .NET, um, it comes with the .NET Framework, and yeah, basically everything that you need. So you'll want to check that, and then down here it should say install, and then you, you go through that process. Once you have that, um, you can open up Visual Studio and we'll go ahead and start making the calculator. And actually, just a little bit to show you, I was messing around with this. I It says I opened it today because I just opened it before recording, but this is a long time ago because I've been planning on making this series a while back and I never got around to it. But anyway, this is all I had so far. This is to give you a basic example of what we're going to do. We're going to make a calculator. You know, you got all your numbers um, and you'll have your operators over here and maybe like a decimal point and then the output screen or the the screen where you see the numbers that you're typing in will be right up here okay just to give you an example but we're going to start from fresh we're going to forget this even exists and i'm going to open up visual studio again right from the start and show you what to do so what we want to do is we want to create a new project so we'll click on that and then we'll be asked um, what we want to create. So you can type in WPF app and we want the .NET framework. Um, you can see on the left here I have it because it's one of the most recent project templates that I used. Uh, so we'll create WPF app .NET framework. It looks good. And let's just name this calculator. Name of the project and the solution name will just keep the same. Um, okay and we'll use 4.7.2 as of right now that's fine I know .NET version 5 came out and I don't really know what's new with that I haven't been keeping up um, so we'll stick with 4 4.7 okay so this is what we got uh, just a really quick I want to show you some of the main components I guess of WPF app. so you have the XAML file which is the user interface and then you have the code behind or the xaml.cs for C sharp and this is where we write all of the underlying code for that view okay and then on the left here in the solution explorer let me make it a little bigger actually let me, let me enlarge this just to make sure you guys can see this okay hopefully you can uh, we have this main window .xaml, and that is by default what it names the the main application window. And XAML is just a markup language. I think it stands for like extensible application markup language. 
XML is extensible markup language, I believe. Um, so that's all it is. It's just a markup language, like HTML. All right, you have the open and close tags, and we'll go through uh, different components as we make this app. But the first thing you want to do, if you're not seeing this, uh, you might see an arrow somewhere, and it'll open up this pane, and then it'll show you, I think they call this the designer. And then you'll, you'll be able to see as we add things. So if I add a button, so let me do button. And I say, here is my button, or I don't know, whatever. The whole thing's a button. But anyway, it allows you to see what it is that you're creating as you're creating it. So you don't have to keep building and running the app every time you make a change. To see the change, you can just see it in this designer. If that's what they call this previewer. I'm going to call it previewer. Anyway, we want to create a calculator. And a good one to base it off of is the standard Windows calculator. It's going to be something like this, something like I just showed you, except we're not going to have all of these buttons at the top and all these you know, extra features. We might add them in the future, I don't know. Uh, but I just want to do the basics, the basic arithmetic, and um, just get the basics down. So anyway, uh, I have also an extension before we get started. Let me show you that. So let me get it installed here. And where is it? Which one? This, yeah, this one right here, the XAML styler. So every time I save now, after making a change in the XAML, it'll style it. And that's why I just hit save by, by habit, and this grid is now one tag, a closed single tag instead of open and closed. So we want to make that back to a closed uh, its own tag like that, like it was before. Okay. So anyway, let's just, um, okay, I did it again. <laughs> we want to close the grid. Cool. So I'm not going to go through every single thing. Um, if you have questions about individual components and stuff, you can feel free to Google those. But I'm just going to make this, you guys can follow along, and I'll try to explain as best as I can. But um, yeah, let's just go ahead and get the, the grid made, I guess. So we want to base it off of the standard Windows calculator. I'm going to have this on my other screen here. And right off the bat, I notice that this is way too wide. So at the top here, you can see width, and we can go ahead and make it smaller. So what if we make it 400? You can see right away, uh, that makes it look a little bit better. Um, but if I just compare it, it still looks maybe a little too wide and maybe not uh, tall enough. So let's just make it 350. Maybe that is tall enough. You know, this is something that we can play around with. Um, and you can play around with and just get to know all of the different settings. I hit save again, and you can see that just did it. I need to stop hitting save. It's a habit. OK, so let's just keep the size. So let's keep it at 350 width and 450 height. And now we have to think about how we are going to lay out our buttons. And I'm going to use this grid that they already had here for us. And I'm going to make rows. And I think the first row is just going to be this output part. OK, so we're going to do grid. Ugh, if I can type grid dot row definitions and inside of that is where we declare each one of the rows so how high or what's the height of each one of these rows and how many rows total are there so inside of the row definitions tag we want the row definition now, I'm not going to make this open and close tag I'm just going to make it a single close tag and the only attribute I care about is the height and this you might want to do some math you're like you might want to plan a bit ahead, but I just like to make it and alter it as needed. But if you wanted to, you could say, okay, we know the height's 450. Um, how many rows is there going to be? There's going to be at least four for the numbers and then one for the outputs of five total. Maybe you want the output a little bit bigger than the numbers and you can manipulate the numbers on like a piece of paper or something and figure out how high you want them to be. But I'm just going to make this 100 and then I'll play with these numbers you know, as I see fit. Okay, and so that's going to be the first row, and then we'll make another row definition uh, for the numbers. And these are all going to be the same uh, height, right? So let's do height, and let's think. Okay, so the height, um, 
it's already down to 350 because we used 100 for the output and maybe we want a little bit of margin at the top we don't want it right at the top we want to give it a little spacing so let's just say oh what's 7 times 4 is 28 so 280 let's just do 70 for each one and then what I'll do is I'll put my cursor right here at the uh, at the edge here or really you can put it anywhere and I'll hit control C and what's nice about Visual Studio is it copies the whole row for you like that. So now, what do we got for now? I have Control C, and yeah, it copied the whole row. I don't have to highlight the whole row, and then hit Control C. I don't know, it's a little shortcut, kind of nice. So each one of these is going to be a number. So actually, I'm going to make a comment. And comments are just like comments in HTML, so these are for the numbers. Cool. And then if I wanted to, I can make a comment. And here I am, I'm doing it the long way, because I highlighted the whole thing after just telling you guys how you can uh, uh, easily copy. But let's say this is for the output window or, or whatever. That makes sense. Okay, and then at the very end, um, I'm just going to put a last row. It's not going to hold anything, I don't think. I'm just going to put it so it takes up the rest of the space, and I'm just going to put a star, which means it's just going to take up what space is remaining. Cool. And then maybe in this grid, I'm going to put a margin. Because I said earlier I want to put some space here at the top. Right, so it's not butt up right against the top. You know, you have some stuff above the output here, but if this weren't here, you don't want it right at the top. I don't know. For me, I don't like that. So, um, and maybe we want some margin in every direction, right? We want some margin to the right. See how they have a little bit of space here, and a little bit of space here, and a little bit of space here. Maybe we want that. So to give margin in every direction, we're just going to put in one single number. And here you can see that we have some nice spacing now. Because before, let's see if it changes. Maybe if I put it to zero. Yeah, there's no spacing now. Now if we put it to 10, you can see we got a little bit of spacing. I think that looks better. That looks cleaner. Having it right up against it. Um, if we wanted to do in certain directions, and I'm sure we will in the future, but just to let you know, each number so in the margins you'll put four numbers and each number is a direction or a side so the first one's left then it's top and then it's right so we'll put five for there and then it's bottom so we'll put two and you can see that they're all different now and this is on the uh on the sides here in the previewer we have 10 10 for 10 and 10 5 and 2. but to make them all unified and all the same we're just going to make it one single number and 10. Now, I think there's another way you can do it. You can do 10, 15. And yeah, it does left and right for the first one, top and bottom, if you put two numbers in. Just FYI. Okay. Uh, and next, we need to make the columns. So that, that raises another question. How big do we want these columns? And these might be more mathematical, because for the output, these are all going to be in the same we're going to merge these columns together, I guess, is what I want to say. And it's not going to be columnized, if that's a word, in the output. It's going to be one single bar. But the, the buttons, they are going to have columns, right? Because over here we have four columns of buttons. So that's what I want to do here. So I'm going to do grid.column definitions. And inside we're going to have our column definition. Instead of height, it's going to take in an attribute of width. And here's where you got to think, okay, well, we have 10 and 10 on both sides. There goes 20 pixels already. Uh, so we're at 330. What's 330 divided by 4? Well, let's find out. 330 divided by 4. It's 82.5. So what if we do that? 82.5. Cool. Well, that looks good, I guess. So what I'll do is I'll just copy that and paste it a few more times. There we go. And I'll clean that up. Let's save. That looks a little better, I guess, right? So each one of these squares is a button. We have this extra space at the bottom. And then the output will be up here. 
Does that look good? I think so. Um, I didn't want to make this video too long. It looks like we're already over well over 10 minutes. So I'm going to end it here, and then in the next video we're going to add the, the different number buttons into the user interface here. But anyway guys, hopefully you are finding some value from this. Um, hopefully you're enjoying this. I'm, I think this will be really fun to make. So anyway, I will see you guys in the next video, hopefully. Uh, take care.